uh, you know, so this is this is really a miracle, and um, I'm so thankful. And I will continue to get much better. My name is Glenn. This is my second retreat. I'm here for a two-week stay. I originally came with chronic fatigue syndrome and all the anti symptoms that come along, the celiac disease and all the other stuff. Uh, the first retreat was remarkable because I couldn't really eat food at all. And now, after that, I've been able to eat food. In the past six months, I took home with what I learned here. I was able, I'm able to walk three miles a day. I've, I've been consistently doing that. And since I've been here, I've been walking between one and two hours a day, which is between six and ten miles a day. Energy's been decent, back and forth a little bit. Uh, I continue to detox and try to clean. This time I learned I was hopeful to be able to eat some grains and stuff that I don't tolerate. I really don't, still do not do very well with them. But Leonard, the chef, did, just went bent over backwards to cook for me, and I was I may still able to eat complete meals, and uh, it's just wonderful. This time I was hoping to learn more on the physical side, but it's been more of an emotional swing this time. And now, now I know what Gary's talking about when he says that 50% of all disease is emotional. So I keep trying to clean on that side of life, go back all the way through my childhood, all the way through even to my conception, and just keep cleaning and trying to clean that side of a life and how much effect that has on your whole life. I sure am appreciative to everything. The staff here is wonderful. Thank you. Those are just a couple of people. That woman went from being in excruciating pain 24-7 to having zero pain. In fact, she subsequently called Luann and told Luann that she was out walking on the boardwalk fast. No walker, no cane, no wheelchair. And she hadn't paid attention to how far she was walking, and she walked three and a half miles. Turned around and walked three and a half miles back, seven miles. And she hasn't done that in 50 years. She, I believe she's around 70 years of age, and she still has no pain, zero pain. So we're very, very happy for her progress. Now, uh, I got a uh, call last night from a person in California who said, are you aware of what's going on at her? I said, no, I'm, I'm not looking at the Internet, and I have no idea. He said, the whole state's on fire. I said, the whole state? He said, well, up in northern states, it's on fire, and they just evacuated now all of Malibu. Now, think of that for a moment. The most expensive homes in California are in Malibu. I've been to Malibu, you know, a hundred times. It's a nice place to go and walk the beach because it's a public beach. And here you have all the famous people and all the rich people's homes in the hills, and now all 13,000 had to be evacuated. Everywhere you look, people are being evacuated just overnight. We're only talking about what happened last night until today. In fact, in one community, people had were running door to door and knocking on people's doors and windows and saying, get out, get out now. And people, it was too late. They had to get out of their cars and put blankets and run through the fire because everything was consumed. Schools were consumed. A whole town was burned to the ground about 3 o'clock this morning. Why is this important? Because yesterday morning and the day before, life was normal. Nothing had changed. And now everything's changed. And that's unfortunate. I I don't like seeing people suffer. I certainly don't like seeing people, uh, their possessions gone frequently, their everything that they've owned gone Insurance is not going to rebuild it for him. So I invited Dr. Ray Spicer on today. He's on the line now. He's a PhD from Rutgers University in microbiology, but he's an expert on water because there is one thing every one of those people is going to come home to, no water, possibly no food. And the trouble is when you have fires, when you have earthquakes, when you have hurricanes, tornadoes, the electric grid is the f- most vulnerable thing. It goes first, and everything is tied to that electrical grid. And we should have shortwave radios, by the way. That's one of the things I don't talk about. I'm going, going to uh, one of the things that's essential. And I was thinking, Roy, one of the things that I can offer people today, in fact, actually, uh, 
we just had a fun drive on BAI, and we offered a water filter. The station set the price. It was $400. I told them it was too high. It's unfortunate they didn't listen. But we're going to offer a, a portable water filter for $189. And it'll be sent out immediately. And with it, I'm going to send free a three-hour what to do when disaster strikes because I can show you in just the recent month all these unique and exceptional disasters that have happened, and no one pays attention to them. For example, uh, recently, the Hurricane uh, Wallaka completely wipes away small Hawaiian island in October, a month ago. And current wildfires in Northern California, now they're in Central California, destroying the entire community of called Paradise. And Super Typhoon U2 hit uh, the Mariana Islands at 180 mile an hour winds. That's category five plus. An iceberg five times the size of Manhattan, the largest iceberg we've ever seen in history, breaks off from Antarctica's Pine Island Glacier. Nepal has lost one third of its permanent ice. Small scale Guatemalan farmers migrating due to drought and shifting weather. 75% of Venice and Italy flooded from a rare, exceptional once in a 500 year high tide, and it went three feet up over everything, destroying ancient architecture and art. Oregon's extreme drought, the area known as being one of the wettest in the country, is now in drought and has been. And there's fires in Oregon that you've never seen before. And Hurricane Michael, uh, it just pummeled the panhandle of Florida. And this is only 11 months after the other category, two Category 4 hurricanes hit within the same year. It's never happened before. And the largest sea ice to date broke off of Greenland. And you had the Global Forest Watch, deforestation is now the third largest CO2 emitter. And Columbia University's Earth Institute saying that we're going through the great drought of 1876, which killed 50 million people worldwide from global famine. And who knows how many people could die from the global famines that are happening now. So we have all these reasons to be concerned. And yet, when people go to bed at night, they rarely think, am I in harm's way? Well, the people of North Carolina never thought about it. And look at North Carolina today. It's devastated. Basements are still flooded. Mold is out out of control. Many of those people will have to abandon their homes. It'll be content, uh, condemned. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, much of Florida. Right now, in the area where my farm, my ranch is, you have nothing's been repaired on roofs in the last year because there are too many destroyed roofs and not enough re- roof repairs. So, we're lurching from one crisis to another to another, and we're not, we're not dealing with it. We're living almost in denial of it. And I want to do what I can to get people at least to be prepared so if any disaster happens to them, they'll have a way of at least surviving. So I'm going to offer the what to do when disaster strikes. It's three hours long, and it's... I don't know what it normally costs. I think 50 bucks or something. I'm going to give it free when they call in and order the water filter. Tell us about the water filter and why it is so important. As you mentioned, Gary, year after year, the weather on the planet continues to prove more violent and unpredictable. And to survive after a disaster, the most important element is having clean, safe water that's drinkable. You cannot drink water after a hurricane when there's floods and animal waste is in the water. We saw that in Puerto Rico, North Carolina. is still there weeks and months afterwards. So the only way you can survive for more than a few days is to have a clean, safe water. And the travel filter or the gravity emergency filter that you're offering gives you the best equipment solution to have clean, safe water from any source. And this has been proven over and over again, year after year, decade after decade, that the new filters that you have can remove the most pathological organisms that are found in water after a disaster. Bacteria and parasites are commonly in water, but after a disaster, they increase in numbers. 
So the Gary Knoll emergency filter can remove bacteria and parasites 99.99% at high levels. There's no other filter that can do that. The filters also remove chemicals that are commonly found in water after disasters. We saw that in New York City after Hurricane Sandy and other places. So the filters will take any water source and clean it up and remove the toxic contaminants, the bacteria, the parasites, chemicals, and even after they chlorinate the water at high levels, it can remove the chlorine residuals and the byproducts of chlorine, which are very toxic. Plus, it can remove fluoride, lead, aluminum, mercury, nickel, all these heavy metals are commonly found in water, and they tend to increase in levels after a natural disaster. So it's a very compact unit. It should be in everybody's go bag. It can be used and reused many times. You can travel with it. You can take it to work. It has a lot of uses, even daily use. So it's a, an item that you must have in order to survive, especially after a natural disaster when you need clean, safe water. The irony of it is rarely do people perceive that they're in danger until they get a knock at 2 o'clock in the morning and they're told, leave everything. You must get in your car and go. And they get in the car and find out all the roads already have been uh, hit by waves of fire, and they don't know what to do. No one had planned, no community planned, the state didn't plan, the federal government didn't plan to have a system, you know, like you're driving down the highway and you see a flashing sign that says, you know, traffic for the next five miles. You should have that, especially where you're prone to this, but they don't. And as a result, now they're completely helpless, and that's unfortunate. So for all of us, especially living in New York City or New Jersey, if you trust the water coming out of your tap, that's foolish. And because we know how bad that water is, it respects what the water authorities tell you. So you should purify the drinking water, at least the water you're drinking. That's important, and this helps do that. And and it's only $185 plus shipping and handling. So, Roy, last comment, would you trust the water coming out of a tap in New Jersey, Connecticut, New York? I look at water reports every day, and when you really look at what's in there, uh, there's multiple chemicals, heavy metals, fluoride. The water's getting worse, as a matter of fact. There's newer contaminants like dioxin, which is an extremely toxic chemical being found in many water sources, especially on Long Island and New Jersey. So, no, I don't trust any water. It's not safe. It's not healthy. It'll meet federal standards, but they're not adequate. And if you drink that water on a continuous basis, it's going to lead to many different diseases. I agree. That's why I filter all my water. And by the way, just this week, as you know, Roy, my own water at the ranch, the animal sanctuary, they just decontaminated the wells just this week. It took a year to have that done. And if you remember, once you have a hurricane, especially one where you have that much water, wells are always going to be contaminated, even if you've sealed the well, because water can go through the soil and go into the uh, pools underneath that you're drawing from, especially in Florida, where the water may be 60 feet down or 40 feet or 80 feet. Mine's 82 feet, but still they were contaminated. Now they're clean. I've been using bottled water. I've been filtering water ever since, and that's how I get in a shower, suds down and pour that <laughs> filtered water over my head and give that to drinking and cooking, but at least it's safe. So thank goodness, you know, and um, th- and I have all those animals to take care of. And uh, plus, you know, just the basics. But now the everything's been decontaminated. But it took 12 months, 12 months of waiting until the company that does it came out and could actually do it. And they they kill all the E. coli and bacteria that's in a well and the water lines. And it's a whole process. Can't use anything. Then they test it and retest it and then test it again. Then it's clean. But that's how vulnerable we are to something that we take for granted, and we shouldn't take it for granted. Take nothing for granted. So give a call. Here's the number to call. And again, this water filter is only $185, and had the station charged a lesser amount, I believe they would have done much better. We still came in and paid a lot of bills for the station with the premiums we did at the end, but uh, unfortunately I don't have any input in what they charge. But we're charging $185, plus you get the free... Uh, CD set, what to do when disaster strikes. And that's really important. Call 877-627-8255. 877-627-8255. 
5065. I only have 100 filters. 877 877- 